Would you like to make your network more resilient to attackers? To stop attacks like ransomware? Or to stop attackers from pivoting from one machine to another and exfiltrating confidential data from your organization? Then you need to look into implementing network segmentation. Hi, I'm William, and welcome to the SMB Secure YouTube channel by CyberX, where we help small and mid-sized organizations improve their defenses and reduce the risk of breaches. Before we dig into deep, let's be sure we define what is network segmentation. And network segmentation is an approach for dividing a computer network into smaller zones to reduce the amount of communication between devices. This can be done both physically and virtually. It is beneficial for reducing congestion on your network, for improving performance, as well as for enhancing security, which is what we are focused on on this channel. There's no reason that every device on your network should be able to communicate. Yes, devices need to communicate. Your computer needs to be able to talk to your printer and your computer needs to be able to talk to your file server. But many organizations have devices on their networks that really don't need to communicate. It is best to divide your network into segments, network segmentation, to begin separating these devices out from one another. And if you think about the way a network is structured, it actually is sort of segmented by default. We just don't realize it. An IP range, a standard slash 24 network with a 255.255.255.0 subnet can only have 254 devices on the network. So the first reason that we mentioned that segmentation is good is for traffic congestion. Um, if you think about a broadcast message as an example, when an device is looking for another device, it sends out a broadcast message to every device on that segment. And every device that receives the message has to read it, process it, ignore it, or respond. Now imagine 200 devices, 250 devices, all sending out broadcast message. Your devices are being bombarded with this all the time. And implementing segmentation, instead of 250 devices, okay, what if we bring that down and we only have maybe 16 devices in this segment? Now, it only has to respond to 16 broadcast messages or broadcast messages from 16 devices. We have greatly reduced the congestion and the workload for these devices on our network. So there are typically two ways that an organization would go about beginning to segment a network, physically and virtually. Physical segmentation is just what it sounds like. We physically separate the network via switches and routers. We then join those two together so they can communicate. You could see an example of this with an organization with multiple locations. Each location has its own network. At the edge, they have a router, and those routers communicate with each other. While this is definitely a very effective way and a very sure way to segment a network, it, get, it would be very expensive if you tried to implement segmentation physically within your environment. So another option for segmentation is virtual segmentation. And in virtual segmentation, we are usually talking about VLANs or virtual local area networks. And this is done with VLAN tagging. So a special tag is modified on all of the packets on your network to identify which VLAN those packets belong to. Then at the switch level, each switch is configured on certain ports to only allow communication from certain VLANs. So you might have a router and a couple switches. And each switch might have two VLANs on them. And each port would then have tags specifying which VLANs they're allowed to communicate with. Then when traffic comes to those ports, if they are not specified for that VLAN, those packets coming in, they are ignored. And this is the method we typically see in today's networks. We usually see VLAN implementation. However, VLANs on their own can be bypassed. It is not very hard for an attacker to do what is called a VLAN hopping attack and cross these VLAN bridges. So for security purposes, the best way to do this is to route your VLANs through a next generation firewall. And this is the approach we take in Zero Trust. Each VLAN is routed through a next generation firewall and that traffic is inspected. So when you design VLANs, there are a few common VLANs you might have. You might have a demilitarized zone, which is typically a subnet or a segment that is used for containing services that communicate with the internet. So servers like web servers, FTP servers, 
your router, those types of devices might go in a VLAN for, that is a demilitarized zone. Next, you should have your guest wireless networks. If you have a guest Wi-Fi or you have a Wi-Fi for your employees to connect their smartphones and personal devices to, that should be segmented as well. There are security risks if these individuals connect your network, if they have infected devices or if they try to perform malicious activities on your network. So segmenting them to a guest network or a guest wireless network is a smart move. IT management network is another segment to consider. IT administrators have to use administrative access many times. They're operating using administrative credentials much more than an ordinary user is. And because of this, they are targets of attackers. Segmenting them into their own administrative network is another smart move. VoIP networks should typically be separated as well into their own segment. VoIP traffic can be sensitive to interference or to congestion, and there are controls such as quality of service that you can implement. But another problem that we see with networks a lot of times when we audit is VoIP technology. Many times the devices, the VoIP phones are older, and if an organization has something like network access control in place, they may have robust network access control in place, but the VoIP phones don't support it. So a lot of times the ports that they are connected to, the segments they communicate on, have less restrictions than others. And a lot of times, as an attacker, we can use those ports to gain access into your network. So segmenting those out is another good security strategy. And the final segment that I'd like to suggest is one for industrial networks. If your organization is a manufacturing organization, you should consider segmenting your industrial networks. These are your robots, um, CNC machines, any devices that have to do with your industrial systems, many times are running outdated operating systems, embedded operating systems that have lots of vulnerabilities, and they are a huge risk to your organization. They could become pivot points for an attacker if they could compromise these and begin a ransomware infection throughout your network, especially if they're joined to your domain. Like we mentioned at the beginning, there are definitely security benefits from network segmentation. As an attacker, when we perform penetration tests, networks that have proper segmentation in place really make it hard for us to pivot, to increase our foothold, to move to other machines. The more time you can add, the harder you make it for an attacker to get into your network, the better. A flat network or a network where all the devices are on the same subnet or the same segment, it is very easy for an attacker to compromise one system, pivot to another, hop to another. It's not hard. Adding segmentation creates roadblocks for the attacker. It makes it harder, it makes it take longer, and it gives you a better chance to find them in your network. So network segmentation is a must-do for every organization. Pretty much every organization has items on their network that should be segmented from each other. It is a control you should put in place. If you're new to the channel, be sure you subscribe and hit the bell notification so you are notified when future videos are released.